And secondly, for you, Governor, if you could uh, just respond to increasing pressure from congressional delegation, legislative <laughs> leaders on the Democratic side, obviously, and, and other folks um, wondering why you haven't taken the extra step uh -huh. of, a, of a shelter in place, given the fact that I think Iowa is one of only five states now that hasn't done that. Yeah, well, in a sense, we've put a lot of the measures into place. I've just done it in an incremental fashion, and I've done it based on data. All throughout this process, I've said that I have worked with the Department of Public Health, the epidemiologist team. They've worked in conjunction with the CDC and other assumptions that they put into the um, into what they're looking at to provide their recommendations to me. So for, on March 15th, I recommended schools close for, um, for four weeks. On March 17th, I issued the public health disaster that closed bars and restaurants, restaurants casinos, um, other uh, ordered that social gatherings be no larger than 10. On March 22nd, I added additional built, um, businesses and suspended non-essential services. So my challenge, I guess, to individuals out there that think I haven't done enough, I would ask them to go and take a look at other states and the re recommendations that they've put in in their um, stay at home. I don't care what you call it. I'm basing it on data. And as Dr. Badati said, and I'll have her walk through the data, we need the flexibility because we can identify where some of the hot spots at. Is it in a region? So we can focus in and make sure that we're getting the equipment there. We have the workforce. We have the surge capacity uh, in place so that we don't overwhelm our hospital systems. Look at the long-term care facilities that are in that area. If you look further west, their numbers aren't near where they're at, maybe on the eastern side of the state or the north or the south. And that will allow us, she also talks a lot about dialing up and dialing down. And so the more that we can base it on data and be responsible in our decisions, then it allows us to have some flexibility to continue to not only address the supply chain, to, but to make sure that those essential workers that are on the line um, know that they're appreciated and feel comfortable continuing to come to work. So I would challenge uh, other uh, Iowans out there to take a look at what some of the other states are doing. Take a look at what we've done in Iowa. I've extended most of them through April 30th. And, and then we have additional things that we're looking at that we may need to ramp up if the, the numbers and the data drive us to do that. We've got time for two more questions. Ron from KWWL. Oh, good afternoon, Governor. Thanks very much. Um, what I'm hearing you say again fairly strongly today is that uh, you believe your mitigation strategy is working, that you're content that 614 positive cases, 11 deaths is about where you thought you'd be by this date, April 2nd. But as people have said to me, why not err on the side of caution now rather than perhaps have some major regrets later if there is a surge? I can start that, and then I'm going to turn it over to Dr. Pratati. She can walk through some of the metrics we've used and why that makes sense. But we have all along really um, put in place restrictions and orders based on the data that we have, and I think we're starting to see the response from that. As we learn more and we take a look at other uh, assumptions and data that's available, we'll continue to monitor the situation. But again, I would ask other um, Iowans and you to look at what we've done and what other states have done, and, and, and you know, I'm not sure why and when they did what they did. I know that I've based my decisions uh, on data that's been provided to me from the epidemiologist team, the Department of Public Health, working in conjunction with the CDC and uh, other um, experts across the country. Okay, thank you. Thank you.